The instruction set architecture outlines which instructions can be carried out by the computer. A microcontroller is an example of a reduced instruction set computer or RISC machine that has a further limited number of instructions. So these instructions are typically represented using mnemonics to make them easier to remember. And then assembly is a compu is computer code written use these, using these mnemonics. Then we're using an assembler to convert the code written in assembly to the raw machine code. So these are the actual ones and zeros that are stored in the memory. Normally computer code is written in a human friendly high level language like C or C++ and then we use a compiler that translates the human friendly code, so the human readable source code into the ones and, machine, ones and zeros that make up the machine code. So instructions have a particular format depending on the actual computer. So this fictitious example below is showing a 16-bit instruction and it's got what's known as a three address format. So we can see these three addresses here. We've got the destination address, A, or the, well the two source addresses are so A and B. So that's why it's called the three address format. And there's actually other parts that make up the instruction. So the first three bits here tell us what type um, of instruction is so whether it's a load, a store, or whether it's a data operation. Then we've got an opcode that may or may or not may or may not be required. Then we've got our three addresses here. So for this particular example here, just with this, this is a made-up instruction set. We can assume the value zero zero one that might represent a data operation. So it's something that's going to be carried out by the arithmetic logic unit. Then the opcode 000, zero, zero, zero is an add instruction. And then in this example, RD, so, we know, so the destination register is 3, uh, A is 2, and RB uh, is 1. So that essentially means, in this case, we'll do the value stored in R2, add it to the value in R1, and store the results in R3. So that's, you know, this is maybe how we represent it using an OS assemble language. So we say add R3, comma R2, R1. So this means R2 plus R1, store the answer in R3. So this is how it, this in this using this instruction format, this is actually how it it's represented in memory. So these are the ones and zeros that will be stored in memory. And it's obviously practically impossible for a human to be able to remember all the different types and all the different opcodes and so on and write the instructions in the ones and zeros. So it's much easier to use an assembler language what uses mnemonics or kind of shortcuts um, to, you know, to represent these instructions. So we'll look at an example. So in this example, we're going to assume the register six and register seven contain the addresses of where data is stored in memory. And then we want to load, we want to get those values that are stored in those addresses and load them in register zero and register one. We're going to add those together and store the result in R2. And then copy the value, so the result of this operation, what's bit R2, copy it to the address stored in um, R5. So for example here, this is the kind of syntax that we'd use. So LDR is a mnemonic for a load instruction. So we load the value stored in address, what's the, the value in R6, and we copy essentially this load that into R0. And again, we do the same again. So the value in R7 represents the address. We copy the data of that address into R1. And then we do our data operation instruction. So this is essentially what we're going to do R0 plus R1 and store the result in R2. So now we know that R2 contains the answer, if you will. So we want to store the answer 
into the main memory at address what of the value what's stored in R5. So as was mentioned earlier, a MAC control is an example of a RISC machine. So RISC is Reduced Instruction Set Computer. So RISC machines have got a simpler architecture and typically fewer instructions than a CISC machine, which is a complex instruction set computer. So in a CISC machine, there can be lots of very complex instructions, each requiring complex hardware to implement them. So we know, for example, add could be, you know, an add instruction can be easily implemented in hardware using a binary adder. So if you've got a more complex instruction, otherwise maybe do multiplication or working out a factorial or something like this, you know, much more complex instruction, it's going to need much more complex hardware to implement it. But, but the thing with these complex instructions means that it, it, it might take different amounts of time in terms of clock cycles to execute. So it's not an instruction being executed in one clock cycle. Some instruction may need more clock, cy clock cycles to execute if they're more complex. And also the instruction might be different sizes rather than each instruction being 8 bits or 16 bits or 32 bits. The instructions uh, might have different lengths as well. But a benefit of the CISC approach is that it can be simple to write the software using the more complex instructions. You know, if the instructions themselves are more powerful, you, you, know, you can imagine you need less of them to accomplish you know, progr uh, a program that does something useful. But um, the RISC approach, this trades simpler hardware design, so the instructions are simpler, they need simpler hardware, but it also makes instructions less powerful. So this means it can be harder for the programmer to write software. You know, you've got less powerful instructions, so you need to be cleverer, combining them in more ways. You might need more, in more instructions to you know, create some software that does the same task as you did, as you did using a SIS machine. Well, the simple hardware design of a RISC approach does mean that all instructions typically execute in a single clock cycle, which means we can implement pipelining so then we can get the fetch, decode, execute, fetch, decode, execute. We can you know, execute an instruction on every clock cycle. An additional advantage of RISC is that the instructions of the same size and a fixed format means that they're easier to decode, so the control unit and things and the CPU is easy to decode, is easy to build, so the instruction is easy to decode. But because, you know, even though the programs are longer, so essentially that, you know, this program, what's stored in the memory, is longer, it's got more instructions, the instructions are simpler, and so overall, it can actually be more executed more quickly than uh, using a CISC approach.